Hello, everyone. I am Josue Crims Rohano, and with me is Kyle Pukasukovic, and we are watching the top four of the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania regionals. On the left, we've got Jimmy Pendarvis, and on the right, we've got the one and only Gino Lombardi. I don't know how you can just say the one and only Gino Lombardi. This guy, he is a legend of the game. He is the 2008 national champion. In that same season, he made top four worlds, and we're getting to capture him here. I mean, a lot of people hate Gino, a lot of people love him, but uh, you cannot question his results, and here he is with another top four at a big tournament. Yeah, well, there's no reason to be a hater here, and um, Gino Lombardi is absolutely one of the greatest game uh, players in this game, and we'll have to wait and see if he can complete his, uh, his regionals run right now. He's in the top four, so just a couple more wins away. Yeah, and uh, Jimmy, I don't actually know too much about him. Uh, from what I do know, I think he's just aged up into Masters, so there's really going to be a contrast between the young and, and well, I guess, the old. <laughs> Not really old, but the more experienced. And um, in this situation, I always tend to give the advantage to the guy with more experience when you make it this deep in the tournament. But who do you think is going to come out on top in this one? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned Jimmy being one of the younger guys that just aged up in uh, into our Masters division. Recently, we've had an influx of people just demand or commanding the um, the Masters division and just having aged up. People like Igor Costa, um, um, just I mean, countless, countless players. And um, yeah, it's just uh, uh, we're, we're all one you know, of those. Yes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> the the point is, man, that we're just in an age where the age actually doesn't matter quite as much as it used to, and these players are are really showing that they've got a whole lot of skill, and um, and it'll be interesting to see if Jimmy can pull this off. Uh, however, currently we've got um, Gino, who's uh, just set up. He's got two Roselias on his bench. This is going to be one of these Pokemon that just um, helps you set up your your deck, helps you. Uh, be consistent in an age where there's just not very many supporters that'll help you do that. And uh, then Jimmy on the left happens to have Sableye, which is, in my opinion, the best, uh, most consistent uh, card in the game right now. Yeah, well, Sableye is not doing nothing right now because he doesn't have any items to get back with Junk Hunt. So uh, he's just been powering up that Dark Ride back there. And on the other side, Gino is powering up his Terrakian EX. So this is going to be. Um, Probably a short match if that Terrakian EX gets powered up, just because Pump Up Smash makes quick work of Dark Rise. And unless you're playing a, a Dark Ride deck with Crushing Hammer, there's nothing you can really do to stop that kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That Terrakian EX is obviously in his deck specifically for this matchup, um, and it's going to be doing a lot of work. I really can't see him do anything outside of with that Evulite. He'll be able to maybe survive a... Um, one hit uh, unless Gino has a tool scrapper or, or something. But we see a Bianca out of Gino, actually, and I believe he's going to be drawing four with this. So, yeah, he does draw four. And let's see. Um, what is Gino looking for here uh, outside of a catcher? Like a tool scrapper as well? Oh, yeah, the EV light is on the dark ride. He can get a plus power or tool scrapper. I, I don't know which combination of those he plays, but um, this is kind of the point of no return for dark ride decks. Once a tracking X gets three energy on it, you can just start going to town with Pump Up Smash, uh, make, I mean, you just basically break Dark Rise in half with that attack. Um, it does just enough for a knockout. You do need a Tool Scrapper or a Plus Power to get rid of the Eevee Light. But other than that, um, Gino's got to be feeling great. He was able to attach an extra energy with Pump Up Smash onto the Terrakian EX on his bench last turn. And all Jimmy's got is a Dark Rise. I don't even think he's played a supporter in a couple turns. So this is going to be a quick game, it looks like. Yeah, it, it was really unfortunate for Jimmy. He hasn't had much of a setup at all. And Jimmy has to be the faster deck here. Um, Gino tries to take advantage of the fact that his Pokemon have such high HP. Gino tries to use Pokemon like Roserade to be able to actually make sure that he can get this in-game consistency. While Jimmy doesn't have that type of an in-game, he's just trying to get to the 90 damage and um, from Night Spear immediately. And unfortunately for him, it's Gino that started to attack first and take the first prizes. So at this point in time, Jimmy has to know that he's on the ropes, especially knowing the fact that he has not played a bench Pokemon yet. Yeah, I actually don't think Jimmy is the faster deck. Terrakiniacs can attack with two energy with Rock Tumble. But, uh, oh, we see Crushing Hammer. You really need those early on in the matchup if you're going to have a shot at this. Uh, one of the ways he could win is just taking advantage of the fact that Gino can only attach once per turn. So you just sit there with Sableye. Junk hunting for crushing hammers every turn, but once Gino's got this much energy on the field already, crushing hammer doesn't do anything. 
Yeah, you see him actually attach a fighting energy here, and he's going to have to go for Confuse Ray, because apparently he doesn't even have a darkness energy. Yeah, well, even if he did, I mean, getting back and crushing hammer is not going to help there. Confusion was probably his best bet. And, uh, I mean, we're just going to see, there's an energy switch, going to see another pump-up smash. And either Sableye is going to bite the dust, or Darkrai will if Geno can get a catcher. And from there, I mean, Geno's going to be ahead, a couple prizes... All Jimmy's got on his board is that Darkrai with 160 damage. As we do see, Gino did draw a catcher. And I don't know what you do in this situation if you are Jimmy. I would... Well, well if I'm Gino, I'm probably going to actually use the Pokemon catcher. Um, yeah. Just take take care of that Darkrai. Don't let him get a max potion. Anything like anything remotely resembling that. Just actually make sure that that Darkrai goes down. The Sableye is not a threat. Um, but if I'm Jimmy... I am thinking that I'm very lucky that it's a best two out of three. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking because I know that this game is pretty much over. Um, but how do, how do you actually like G um, Gino's deck? Gino's deck is a little unique for this format. Um, definitely not what you'd expect out of the normal tier one decks. Yeah, the Terrakian Mewtwo deck is one that was around for a while. I mean, it makes sense. Terrakian takes care of Darkrai. Mewtwo really takes care of the rest. And... You know, the only thing that's bad about it is that you only get to attach one energy per turn. So you really are vulnerable to those Crushing Hammer Darkrai decks. The ones that just focus on Darkrai and Sableye and nothing else. Uh, just because they're going to discard your energy before you get anywhere. That was kind of the reason why this deck died out. But, you know, when you're not running into that sort of thing, it's very powerful just to be able to have a fighting Pokemon blasting your opponent for 90 every turn. And the, Ro the Rose Raid with the Le Parfum, or however you say it, really gives you some options later on. You know, if you just evolve, you get to search for anything, so it helps you search out those crucial cards like Catcher and Switch and Plus Power. Yeah, absolutely. I can't agree more. Um, I I disagree that it's... Well, I shouldn't say I disagree, because you're obviously correct. The Crushing Hammers and, and all that really is going to put um, Geno in a tight spot if he can get them out early. But it's the fact that he has to get them out early, and he has to connect with them, that really makes this a lot closer than one would imagine. Obviously, Geno doesn't have energy acceleration, so if um, if all goes well for the for the Crushing Hammer deck, then Geno's in a lot of trouble. But all does have to go well, so it's, uh, it's a pretty close uh, situation for, for these decks to be in. Yeah, we had a dispute there because they were using the same die to keep damage as they were for uh, rolling, which is not allowed in tournaments, actually. You're supposed to have a different colored die, and that's the reason why. The uh, the die that he was rolling bumped into the damage counter one, and they didn't know which was which. But Gino said, whatever, i got to switch anyway. We won't worry about it. Uh, he searches for a catcher, and this game is all but over. Yeah. He uh he actually found his catcher thanks to Le Parfum and that should be it. Um, no no no, that oh, Sableye <laughs> he could go a long way. Well, that Bianco helped too, I guess. Um, yeah, Sableye does have to hit heads on confusion, and his opponent has to. Oh, there's the switch. <laughs> he just shows the switch. He says, you know what, man, let's uh let's go to game two. Uh, right. I'm not gonna slow early. That actually didn't even matter. He could have just retreated since Tracking EX has a three retreat cost, not a four like the uh, the bulkier normal Terrakian. Uh, so, so broken. Even if he, if he didn't have a switch there, he could just retreat and win the game. So uh, Gino takes a quick 1-0 lead. What do you think of the situation now? Well, I think, um, I think Gino just had a much better start, obviously. Jimmy, unfortunately, didn't really have much of a start at all, and it, it just showed. I mean, Gino really didn't need anything. I mean, his rose rates were, were kind of like just dead weight there. He was sitting there going, well, do I actually need anything in this situation? No, I guess not. Um, uh, and unfortunately for Jimmy, he just could not set up. He he um, didn't really have the tools, or the trainers, I'm sorry, in order to be able to really slow down the game, um, put momentum in his own favor, and it was just a non-game. It was one of those situations where one player pulls ahead and just doesn't look back. That's kind of the problem with this format. Yeah, I mean, if you're Jimmy, you really cannot focus on attacking with Darkrai. Uh, I haven't used the Darkrai tracking deck quite a bit. In this sort of a matchup, sure, you need to lead off with your Darkrai just because, well, he's your attacker. But you really need to focus on using your own Terrakian to just kind of have an attacker that doesn't get destroyed by the fighting Pokemon of Geno. And, you know, that first game, he really didn't have the options... To use Retaliate with his own Terrakian, but if he's if he wants to have a chance in this one, that's what he has to do. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, Gino here obviously is going to be is, is the favorite currently, but you mentioned that the crushing hammers and, and stuff like that really is going to put a um, put some damage onto Gino. So, do you feel like Jimmy uh, is favored to get out of this matchup still? Uh, based on the way the first game went, I don't think so. This is not a deck that's focused on the crushing hammer strategy. You know, I don't know how many he actually runs, but um, just the way the first game played out, it didn't look like it was very easy for him to to get that many. And when that doesn't happen, Geno's deck, I mean, on paper, you just look at it. He has gigantic fighting Pokemon that knock out Dark Rise in one hit. Um, clearly, he would be the favorite if there were no other factors in this matchup. But uh, it's all going to come down to Crushing Hammers, and if Jimmy can get them early, if he can flip some heads, uh, if he can get Sableye to reuse them, and if that fails, then he's got to look to Terrakian to help him out. Yeah. Um, obviously, the fact that he didn't have Crushing Hammers could have been aided by the fact that he also didn't have supporters. Um, yeah. But you're right that it doesn't seem like his deck is focused around that so, uh, quite as much as other decks might have been. Um, so I can't argue with you there. Gino actually gets an extra card to start this game because Jimmy uh, Mulligan. And he's going to Mulligan again a second time. So that's two extra cards. That's That's... You know, that's a big difference. Yeah, the the thing about the crushing hammer strategy is, uh, you kind of hinted at it before, there is a point where it just doesn't matter anymore. Um, if you can stop Geno from getting those initial 2-3 energy on board, then the crushing hammers are money. You can just keep discarding his energy, he'll never be able to really attack you, and you can actually just run someone out of energy with crushing hammers, sacrifice your stabilize to do that, but if Gino ever gets three energy on board, that lets him use Pump Up Smash, get more energy out there, and the game is pretty much done at that point. Yeah, the infamous Crushing Hammer Lock. So we see an Ann immediately out of uh, Jimmy, and he does attach a Darkness Energy onto his Sableye, so you know he's going to be looking for some sort of trainers, maybe an Ultra Ball or something, just so he can actually get get a little bit of value. Yeah. Now, interesting from Gino is that his Rose Raid line is really thick in that deck. Uh, usually with Roserade, we've seen people run like a 1-1 one, one line or, I mean, something a little smaller. But he's got at least three Roselias in his deck, and I want to assume at least two or three Roserades. And uh, that's just interesting to see because we don't really see too many support Pokemon used in this format. But looks like Gino, you know, he's found the one thing in the format that can help him out in Roserade. Oh, there's that Ultra Ball that I was talking about. And he actually gets a discarded Dark Patch. So... I love value, and I love Sableye, so I'm actually very happy for Jimmy here. Um, but you couldn't be more right. I saw the three Roselias at the start of the game this uh, um, or on game one, and I and I was thinking to myself, how many Rose Raids does he actually have to play in order to make those three Roselias work? I think two is the correct number. Three, uh, you start you start losing a lot of value when it comes to your deck. You um, you no longer you know have enough uh, targets for Rose, for Rose Raid to really make uh, good use out of it. So I think at around three two, you devote five spots in your deck, so I have fifty five cards to work with. That sounds that sounds like the right number to me. Yep. Uh, now Jimmy, he, I mean, he has an okay hand. That Ultra Ball, he didn't get to discard any Dark Energy, which is what you really want to do early on, so that you can use your Dark Patch. So it's going to be another slow start for him. No turn two Night Spears. Uh, that, that's really going to be super tough to pull off. It's still a possibility with cards like Energy Switch, but um, no quick Night Spheres, it won't look like, and no Crushing Hammers in its hand that I could see. Maybe he'll have a few, and um, this, these opening turns are going to be absolutely crucial for Gino to get some energy on board. You are so greedy. I'm sitting here praising the fact that he's actually going to be able to junk hunt uh, for maximum value. And you're sitting there going like, no, I want more. I want to see darkness energies. I want to see this. I want to see that. Man, yeah, man. relax. <laughs> I just, I, I want to see some sort of value. I mean, it, I, I've been play, I've been in the dark side, or, or I'm sorry, the dark side. <laughs> I've been uh, on the dark right side. <laughs> that explains a lot. Yeah, on the dark side. Uh, otherwise known as the dark side from here on out. And um, I, I've... I've been playing this deck for a long time now, and I can tell you that there's been so many times that I've Ultra Bolt and no Darkness Energies. And as long as I get the Junk on two, for two trainers, I'm I'm still happy. I'm I'm just sitting there, you know, praising the fact that I'm not totally screwed. Yeah, but I mean, you are down a game in the top four versus Geno. You Ultra Ball a second time without getting rid of a Dark Energy. At some point, you need something to go your way if you're going to win a matchup like this. 
Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's why I'm worried that there's still no dark energy in the discard pile. And I have faith in the dark side, Kyle. Gotta have faith in the dark side. Yeah, well, I got faith in the tracking side to uh, beat the dark side. If you look at the little weakness symbol in the bottom left corner of the dark side, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it doesn't bode well if you sit there and don't power one up for a while. Yeah, I'm I'm like actually picturing Darth Vader against uh, pumped up kicks right now. So <laughs> that's actually what's going through my mind. You're more than welcome to keep casting. I'll just have that image in my head. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> uh, we got an N here from Jimmy. He's going to be able to draw six. One of the other things that's helping him out is that uh, Gino did start with Roselia, so he's going to have to burn a switch or possibly an energy attachment at some point to retreat that thing. So uh, that's going to slow down Gino a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, I can agree more. Um, however you are right, Jimmy does not really have a very good start again. And as much as I'm trying to, you know, make light of the situation and, and kind of like keep uh, keep my hopes up for the dark side, the truth is this is not going to be uh, going to be pretty at all. That Tarakini X is getting its second energy attached one turn away from actually being able to uh, pump up its kicks. And, uh, pump save up line. smash, by the way. It's pumping up its kicks, man. I'm saying it. How I want to say it. Um, and Fable High is, uh, it's starting to cower in fear here. It's its looking its its looking bleak for, for my man Jimmy. Yeah, once once the Tracking EX gets three energy, that's just, you know, you cannot do much about it. You sit there with your Dark Pokemon and you take 180 damage every time. Uh, I don't know what you really do about that. So he, he really needs to get something going here like this turn. The, the problem is, even if he gets a Night Spear now, if he doesn't have any crushing hammers, um, he just gets hit in the face with a pump-up smash, and he loses the game. So, um, Gino's going to catch out that Darkrai with uh, no energy on it, just to try to buy a little time here, make it tougher for Jimmy to get a Night Spear, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, um, Jimmy's perfect turn involves a crushing hammer heads. And it involves a Night Spear on the Tracking EX. That's what he's looking for. Will he be able to achieve it? He's got an Ultra Ball with two Darkness Energies, um, finally. And hopefully we see some sort of Dark Patch with a Juniper or something. Yeah, I mean, I think... Yeah, there's a Dark Patch halfway there. (laughs) Yeah, now I think Jimmy's perfect turn actually is just two Crushing Hammers and he Junk Hunts for them. It's, uh, you, we're still at the point here where Gino does not have three energy on board. That is where things start to spiral out of control. But, um, you know, if he can't get those two crushing hammers, the next best thing's got to be a Night Sphere. There's that Juniper, too. Um, like I mentioned, this is really what Jimmy wanted to do. Jimmy, um, at this point, attaches a Darkness Energy, retreats to his Dark Rye. I'm sure he's going to have some sort of energy switch. There it is. And Crushing Hammer, please, one time. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't, he's still not out of it completely. Gino needs a third energy, and then either a tool scrapper or a plus power to get a knockout. Um, one of the things that we've seen from Gino is that he does not have Eviolite. It doesn't look like he plays any tools at all, which uh, is pretty interesting. Yeah, my heart broke right now. We see the <laughs> plus power out of Gino, and that is going to be pretty brutal, um, assuming that uh, Gino has the energy, of course. Yeah, which uh, doesn't look like he has it in his hand. He's got a Juniper, though. So he's going to have to... I mean, he's really going to have to discard a lot of stuff to go for an energy here. Um, but unless he has an Ultra Ball, then he could get a Roserade, which would give him the energy. So we'll see what he decides to do. Yeah, there's that Ultra Ball. I'm sure he's finding the Roserade right now. And that's that's the safe play, absolutely. I mean, um, if you're going to be using Roserade, aren't you just doing it to try to be a little bit on the uh, go a little bit on the safe side here? Yeah, I mean, the the safe side is definitely what you want to do here. Just grab an energy with Lay Parfum, get your pumped up smash going on. Um, he's already used the plus power. But he's actually not safe yet because he doesn't have Eevee Light. Um, and, and if Jimmy can power up another Dark Rye next turn, he can just Night Spear for a knockout. So Gino really needs to get an energy off of the these seven cards so he can attach an extra one to his Terrakian. And it looks like he got it. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, you are absolutely right. He, I mean, granted, Jimmy only has one energy on his bench dark ride and one energy on his Sableye, which means that he would need some sort of a combination of, well, some sort, some combination to get two, two more energy onto his dark ride. No easy task. We've seen him struggle to do this uh, this entire match. And, um, yeah, it's, 
it's it's still close. It, it's definitely not over for either side, but Gino definitely takes the lead. Yeah, I mean, he's going to take the first uh, couple prizes here. Take out this Dark Ray with three energy on it. And he's going to Ultra Ball. Uh, he'll probably go for a fresh Terrakian if he can get one. Just because that other one has 30 damage on it already. And it looks like he's going for Terrakian EX, actually. Which is strange to me, just because... See, I could have sworn that was a normal Terrakian. Maybe I just had got a bad angle, but I could have sworn that was a full art normal Terrakian. Nope, uh, the one on his board already is the normal one. The one he searched for was Terrakian EX. A little, di little different. Uh, but whoa, Jimmy's got a fast turn here already with the Dark Patch. And here we go. He's going to be able to get a Night Spear off, but... Night Spearing in this situation? Oh no. This is going to be a disaster if Gino has a fighting. Uh, yeah, this is really unfortunate for him. I didn't quite see the fighting, but I wasn't looking for it. Oh, he's got a double uh, color color too. And, yep, there's that double colorless energy, which is more than enough. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, Gino is not going to discriminate here, and I'm sure he's just going to take this easy two prizes and leave his opponent with only a Sableye in play. This is... Looking like the end of the road for Jimmy, and it's looking like uh, Gino seeing seeing the finals. Yeah, I mean, the, Jimmy played his turnout so fast that I couldn't really comment on anything, but um, he really had a lot of cards he could have worked with there to have a shot at this. Number one would have been a Crushing Hammer, which would have absolutely devastated Gino to discard the one energy on his regular Terrakian. Really would have left him with no option to attack. So that's number one. Uh, number two would have just been an Eviolite. Um, it would have let his Dark Eyes survive this, unless Gino got, you know, plus power too. So he whiffed some big cards there, and it's just the difference between having a shot at the game and being retaliated for 180. Yeah, um, woulda, coulda, shoulda, obviously, but it, it just feels like either A, Jimmy doesn't play very many Crushing Hammers, and he was just kind of testing the waters playing two or so, and going like, oh, well, maybe I can get lucky every once in a while. Or B, Jimmy's just getting really unlucky here because that's his path to victory in this matchup. His path to victory strictly involves things like crushing hammers and abusing uh, Eviolites to not get knocked out. And um, these are just situations where uh, th that's what would put Jimmy in the lead, and he's just not seeing them. So either A, he's really running low on them in his deck, and that's just, you know, part of the luck factor. Or B, he's, or, uh, or B, he's just getting completely unlucky. And if that's the truth, then, you know, uh, I feel you got to feel bad for the kid. Yeah, no, let's be real. He's not lost this game yet. There's really the only attacker for Geno on board with energy is that normal Terrakian. It's got 60 damage on it already. So if Jimmy can manage to power up, you know, any attacker, he can knock that thing out. And then all of a sudden, geno has got no energy in play. He's got two cards because of this N. And Crushing Hammer is still a possibility to, to just kind of get Geno out of the game by discarding the rest of his energy. So... Even though it looks very, very bad for Jimmy at this point, he's going to junk hunt for an enhanced hammer and a random receiver, and he'll be right back in it. Yeah, you're, you're good at finding the um, uh, the positive side of things, but we in the dark side, we know we know what's up. We know uh, we know exactly when to kind of, you know, just throw in the, the white towel, so to speak. And um, I'm, I'm just kidding here, but the truth is that it, it really is not as... Um, pretty as, as you're trying to make it look uh, but you're right he does have a shot he uh he is not out of the game until you know he faces another terrakian ex oh, this is just the regular terrakian that's hitting him for 90 but um i mean even in these situations it looks very bleak but never underestimate the power of n and ooh, that would have been a big crushing hammer yeah, um, really nice crushing hammer <clears throat> yeah he already had the enhanced hammer to discard the double colas uh, Gino, he got, he was a little fortunate there. He drew a Juniper off of his two card N. So he's got plenty of resources to work with now. But again, he only gets to attach one energy per turn. If this tracking goes down or this crushing hammer hits, he's going to be in some trouble. And there's a head. So who knows? You might see a comeback. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> am I going to eat my words? Um, let's see here. You know, if Jimmy has an energy switch and a fighting, he could land crush for a knockout here. Otherwise, he's just got to settle for 30 from a retaliate, which I'm sure he doesn't want to do. There's an energy switch, though. Does he have the fighting? We'll have to wait and see, because we really don't have a good camera angle here. <laughs> doesn't look like he does. So yeah, he, he would have just... played it right now, already. 
He's going to have to settle for a measly 30 damage from Retaliate. And if you're Geno, you're in a weird spot. You pretty much just want to give up the active Terrakian. Um, just kind of concede that it's going to get knocked out. Start powering up something on the bench. And, you know, hope that Jimmy can't do anything about it. And sweep up the game with one last attacker. Otherwise, I really don't know what your plan is. If you attach to the active, you can only do 10. And if Jimmy hits another crushing hammer or just a fighting, he knocks out your only Pokemon with energy. And where do you go from there? So, uh, I think Geno's best case scenario here would be like a switch and a double callus onto his Mewtwo. But if he can't do that, he just has to settle for powering up something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that's the gist of it. However, I would just... Uh, what is that? Oh, tool that's scrapper. a tool scrapper. Kind of. A little on the relevant side. Uh, well, not really, because he could do just 30 with Retaliate now and threaten a knockout for the next turn. Now there's only 10 hit points left on that Terrakian. As long as Jimmy doesn't top deck, uh, well, that. <laughs> um, his Terrakian's going to live. So, yeah. you know, who knows? This could start to turn around here. Jimmy does yeah. get an N. And... It was a good idea by Gino to, um, to actually uh, play that Tool Scrapper on that turn, even though... It technically couldn't have mattered it's just the fact that he can avoid situations like this where, where his opponent ends him and takes the tool scrapper away from his hand so yeah i, I, mean, I do like gino playing the tool scrapper right then and there the only problem with this situation for jimmy is that he only has 10 hit points left in this terrakian so if i mean just if, if a mewtwo gets a double callless and even if a roselia gets a single energy i believe it has an attack that can do 10 that would knock out this terrakian <laughs> So oh, no. <laughs> can Roselia is... actually attack for colorless? That's so <laughs> broken. Yeah, so this is really going to be the turn he needs to get another Pokemon out here. Uh, otherwise, he's going to be in a lot of trouble if this Terrakian goes down. Hmm. I'm interested to see uh, what kind of or what Pokemon actually Geno activates. If he's just going to activate the Roselia, if he has the energy already, which I don't think he does. Um, he'll probably activate Mewtwo just because he has Bianca in hand, and. He's got an Ultra Ball, too. So those are really two of the best cards he could hope for. Uh, Bianca, of course, will fill up his hand. And then if he doesn't draw what he needs, he can Ultra Ball for a Roserade. And get any card he wants. Very good idea. Um, can't argue with that. Me Too would give him that prize. Would put it, would threaten to be able to, one, uh, to knock out the uh, Sableye at the very next turn as well. Mm-hmm. So, oop, he's Maybe going for Roselia. Maybe instead he the Roselia. Which is oh, a little bit is safer. that the energy? Yes, it is. He actually top decked the energy. Yep. That's very nice. Um, looks Why is like he playing Bianca first before the energy? Is he? Uh, is his deck too short or something? No, no, I think he... I mean, like in a perfect world, he would draw a switch and a DC, and he would rather attack with Mewtwo. This is a two-flip attack, though. So if he gets two tails, which he just did, this does zero damage. And all of a sudden, Terrakian lives, and Jimmy's got hope. Oh, buddy. Um, yeah, I... First of all, I was surprised that Roselia had a colorless energy attack that did 10 damage. Now, uh, there's there's a little curveball where he actually has to not get unlucky here. And he did. So, there's a Pokemon catcher. Uh, catchers up the Mewtwo. And he's going to be dealing 90 to it. Threatening to knock it out next turn. Yeah, I guess this is a, a good move just to get the jump on the Mewtwo. Because he's realizing, alright, if anything's going to be able to attack in the near future, it's going to be this thing. Mewtwo is the only one that can attack for just uh, a single double callous energy. And I need to get the jump on it, otherwise it's going to overwhelm me. So Jimmy made the right move there. The question is, can he do anything about it next turn? He's going to get X-Balled for a knockout. Does he have any cards like Enhanced Hammer or Crushing Hammer to stop this Mewtwo from just ending him? Or, I mean, is he going to just sit there and take it? Um, well, we saw him already play one Enhanced Hammer. Uh, yep. I I would assume he's going to play about two in his deck. So there is hope that he still has one more. Maybe he he might have it in his hand. He might be able to um, find it in his uh, very thin deck, or it might be prized. Uh, he show, Gino's showing him a switch, a double colorless, and a plus power. Yep. Um, it's a little soon. I mean, it doesn't really end the game. We have a Crushing Hammer here from Jimmy. And, alright, that's a Tails. That's probably going to end it. He could have pulled off some wacky turn, 
with um, a dark ride giving him free retreat and then a Terrakian energy switch to retaliate, but none of that's going to matter because Gino takes the knockout with an X ball and he will move on to the finals. Yeah, we saw Gino get a little bit ahead of himself. Showed uh, showed the fact that he might have you know that he pretty much has everything he needs. It was a little early, but at the end of the day, Jimmy really couldn't take advantage of the situation, and Gino ended up pulling this game off. Really, he was uh, he was never really behind, and that was the case throughout the entire match for ge- games one and two. And we're gonna see him uh, go on to the finals and be one win away from being the regional champion. Yeah, he's going to be going up against Ryan Sablehouse in the finals, who we have covered already in a previous match. So this should be an interesting matchup between two incredible players, and I'm excited to see who ends up coming out on top on that one. Absolutely. Stay tuned, guys, so that you guys can see the exciting conclusion of uh, Philadelphia Regionals. Thank you very much.